My name is Natasha Jacobs, and my grandfather had young onset dementia. And my name is Basil DeMantis, um, Natasha's father. Um, and my connection to early onset dementia would be my father, Linus. I would notice that he was writing his name over and over on a pad of paper. So he was, um, what I could tell now, he was practicing his signature. Um, but in the moment, I couldn't understand why he would continue to keep writing his name over and over. Just little things, uh, finding a screwdriver in the ref refrigerator, not remembering faces. One day he took my mom to church. He did want to go to church that day, that Sunday. and. Uh, my mom then called me and said, your dad was supposed to pick me up. I don't know where he is. Now I'm driving, looking around to see if I could find my father. Um, I don't know why to this day um, I was sent to go look down at the beach. I went down that path, um, went to the beach, found the car, parked somewhat diagonally off. Um, the engine still running, the key in the ignition, and the engine still running, and the door wide open. Now you have to appreciate the water is a hundred yards from there. Uh, my heart absolutely skipped the beat. I, anyways, I, I chose to go out and walk, and there he was sitting on the bench. Um, and I said, did you not know to go pick up? He says, was I supposed to? Yes, you were supposed to pick him up. Okay. Let's say, let's go, let's go get her. We came back out and he walked right past the car. And I said, Dad, you know, he says, but the car, my car is white. This is a blue car. And I knew, that's when I knew. Helping him during this time was difficult, um, mainly because both him and my grandmother um, would tend to brush it sort of under the rug or deny some of the things that were happening or even sort of put them off to maybe tired or just plain forgetful. Um, and again, I was about nine when this was happening. So what I recall is that I would continually bring them up to my grandmother to try and let her know that I really thought something was really wrong. we would have sort of like real sort of inward conversations where we'd look over what could we learn from what just happened, what could have helped. And I think really one of the things that she struggled with was education. She really just didn't even know what the disease was. There's a definite culture difference. And I think um, my mom grew up from, we were originally from Guyana and uh, People who had dementia, no one talked about. Um, and those who did say anything were generally institutionalized. They would sometimes be taken away from their families and put into a home. And uh, that's something that just scared the daylights out of my mother. From when I was young, watching my grandfather go through this journey to um, college, through to all of the studies that I went through, even in the textbooks, even in the brochures, even um, just speaking to healthcare professionals, the journey always sort of looked the same. Um, it always sort of seemed like a, a white Canadian family um, who knew about dementia by the time they got the dementia and knew to access very specific care. My father looks like he's having dementia. Could you tell us about it? And then the, you got the information and then you saw a specialist and then you got the resources and then you were eventually in long-term care. And that journey is the same journey we continually hear about. But sometimes dementia looks like aunts and uncles living together in a one bedroom apartment that they got when they came and everybody is struggling to look after that person. Sometimes it looks like um, a husband um, looking after his partner. Um, sometimes it looks like a daughter looking after her father or sometimes it looks like people who have immigrated to Canada and everyone's looking after everybody. And those stories are valid. And I think that is the conversation that needs to happen. 